Hi everyone, I'm going to start doing like a bit of a news roundup and I thought it would be cool to do some like reaction videos or something like that just so that we can talk through these things together, look at the cases, look at the crimes and you know, see what's happening like now. So the first thing I want to look at is that um, in the UK an MP was murdered and so that's bang in the news right now. Um, it was a while ago that the crime happened, but the, the suspect has just been found guilty. So we're going to react to the news video now. This has come from BBC News. So the BBC is a British institution and, you know, they're the fab for getting news and stuff online. Fantastic videos. Um, and this is what we're going to look at now. Press play. Last few minutes, a jury at the Old Bailey has found 26-year-old Ali Harvey Ali guilty of murdering the MP Sir David Amos and preparing acts of terrorism. The Islamic State group fanatic carried out the cold and calculating murder at the veteran Conservative backbenchers constituency surgery in Leon C in Essex last October. This report from our home affairs correspondent Daniel Sanford contains flashing images. Wow. His Majesty. Please, please, quick now. The man is wielding a knife and he's throwing me. He killed David Amos at Belfast Methodist Church. It's the 15th of October last year and in the leafy suburbs of Leon C, a man has just murdered an MP. Wow. He wants to get shot, apparently. He wants to be a hero. He wants the police to come and shoot him. Hey, what, the person with the knife? Yes. Yes. He says if we go near him, um, he will stab us. They say it's got a knife and he's just stabbed no, off. Within minutes, the first two officers arrive. They don't have guns, just batons. <laughs> Cautiously, they move in. Can you show us, mate? Wow. So bad, yeah? To tackle the knife man. So brave, honestly. They have no stab vests, no other protective clothing. Oh, yeah. Mate, drop the knife. Drop the knife down! On the floor now! Oh, oh, the floor! Shoot it down! Given that this person had a weapon, they had they couldn't have acted any more differently because he clearly a threat to other people. The killer blurted out his motivation. Domestic or hate related terror. Terror. Mr. Ali, is this a terrorist attack? I mean, I guess yeah. I killed an MP. I'm not done yet. Yeah. Okay. Ali Harvey Ali grew up in Croydon in South London. He was clever. He hoped to train as a doctor. But he became radicalised in his late teens by the Islamic State group's propaganda. At first, he considered killing Michael Gove. Then, carrying a knife, he started making trips to Westminster, looking for other MPs. Going to the Houses of Parliament, you know, trying to spot where they come out of, what they're doing. But, he meditated. You know, obviously because of the attacks, there's police there are armed to the teeth. This was an individual who had not just committed an atrocious murder in South End, but who had crossed the line into criminality and serious preparation for terrorism a couple of years ago. Ali eventually settled on Sir David Amos as his victim almost by chance, as the MP for South End West had advertised his constituency surgery on Twitter. On October okay. the 15th, he set out from his North London home, taking the train to Leon C and calmly walking to the church to murder the much-loved local MP. The murder here at Belfair's Methodist Church rocked British politics. Sir David Amos was the second MP to be killed in just over five years. What the heck? His assassination and that of Joe Cox risked undermining a fundamental principle of British politics that MPs should be easily available to those they represent. I mean, that is just shocking, right? So that MP was just going to work, um, had had a drop-in clinic, so his constituents could come talk to him, and then he was attacked. I mean, if you are an MP and things like that, you're going to want to be safe, aren't you? So now it's putting that whole thing into question. Second one in five years as well, guys, that's pretty bad. The police officers who attended that scene, bang on. I mean, how brave they entered there with no um, PPE on. They'd got just a baton, no vest, nothing like that. Went in swift arrest and that's all on, on camera. So absolute bravery and um, legendary status, I think, there for those cops. Yeah, what a, what a horrible situation for um, David Armas' family. 
you know, and hopefully some justice has been served now that, you know, the guilty verdict has been passed. It's a massive warning as well about radicalisation and how vulnerable our young people are. So let's just hope that the things they're putting into schools and colleges now are going to prevent further young people from getting in, into those cycles of, of radicalisation and terrorism and things like that. Because, you know, when when that individual was born, I don't think they were born and decided they were going to be a terrorist. It's something that's been conditioned and radicalised. And um, yeah, what a shocking story. But yeah, that's a big case in the news this week. Thank you. Bye.